Okay. Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and grace and peace to everybody viewing Bible Christians in the name of Jesus. What we're going to deal with today is called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. Now, this feast is a very important feast unto the Lord. And all the followers of Jesus and the followers of God will keep this feast. We're going to start off in Leviticus 23. This feast has great meaning. In this lesson, we're going to show you how the Feast of Unleavened Bread is still important and what it points to. Leviticus 23, we're going to start at verse 1. When you get there, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. All right, right off the bat, it says in verse 1, The Lord spake unto Moses. Moses didn't make these feasts up. This is the Lord speaking unto Moses. And he says, Speak unto the children of Israel concerning the feast of the Lord. Not the feast of the Jews, not the feast of Christians, but the feast of the Lord. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Uh huh. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations which you shall proclaim in their season. All right, now it says, These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations or holy gathering which you shall proclaim in their season. Now we know the Sabbath day, that's the weekly feast. Every seven day, that's the day we're supposed to get together and feast and, and celebrate the Lord's Sabbath. Not Sunday, but the seven day Sabbath. That's the day we're supposed to get together and have a holy convocation. But now we have the annual feast, and the first one mentioned, we're going to read in verse 5. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. All right, so in the 14th day, the month of Abib, around the springtime, because that's when the Lord's New Year is. In the springtime, that's why you look out the window, the days start getting warmer, days start getting longer, and the fl flowers start to blossom, trees start to blood, uh, bud, and also the animals start reproducing and, and things like that. Because that's the beginning. Everything's new in the month of Babel. And on the 14th day of that same month is the Lord's Passover, and we have a uh, lesson explaining about the Passover. But we're focused on the next feast day, the day after the Passover. What is that? And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. All right, so it says seven days we must eat unleavened bread for these seven days. On the 15th day of the month of Abib, we must eat unleavened bread seven days. It didn't say you have to or you can if you want to. It says you must eat unleavened bread on for seven days. Verse 7. In the first day, you shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. All right, so on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we shall have a holy convocation or a holy gathering, because it's the Lord demon is holy, and we can't do no servile work therein. Only work we can do is the work pertaining to the feast, preparing food and celebrating. Go ahead, verse 8. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is in holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. All right, now we know Jesus was an offer sense, uh, offering, so as the sacrificial law, we don't, we're not, we don't have to do that anymore. But we still need to keep these feast days. And he don't tell us that. Flip over to Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. And this is when the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 13. We'll start at verse 3. And look what Moses told them. Exodus 13 and verse 3. When you get there, go ahead. And Moses said... Unto the people, remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from His pla from this place. Uh -huh. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. All right, so he says, since we came out of the land of Egypt, no leavened bread shall be eaten. Verse 4, this day came ye out in the month of Abib. So that's the beginning of the year, the Lord's year, the month of Abib. Jump down to verse 6 and go ahead. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Uh -huh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy court. So he said we got to eat unleavened bread seven days, and no leaven shall be seen with you. And what is leavened bread? Leavened bread is bread that's been puffed up from yeast or some form of rising agent. Puffed up bread. Bread without leaven, so it should be flat, thin, wafer-like bread. That's the kind of bread he wants to eat for seven, day, for seven days. We can't have any regular puffed up bread with yeast standing for seven days only. Anything after the seven, after this feast is over, you can go ahead and start eating those things again. But the Lord is requiring or commanding that we don't eat anything with leaven for seven days. Seven days. How long shall this last? Jump down to verse 10 and go ahead. 
Thus shall therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. All right, so we shall keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. So every year on the, in the month of our bed or beginning of the year, you can tell it by the new moon. It's easy to figure out. It's not that complicated when this feast day is. And for seven days straight, you're supposed to keep this as a feast unto the Lord. Now let's see if Jesus kept this feast. Flip over to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. And if we're going to be Christ-like, we need to be Christ-like in every aspect. Celebrate the feast days that Christ celebrated. Because he's the one that gave it to us in the first place because Jesus is God. Um, Matthew 26 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead. And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. All right, so do we know that Jesus kept the Passover. If he kept the Passover, he kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And he died on the very Passover. Why? Because we understand Jesus is that sacrificial lamb. And we have a lesson touching on that. Now, let's see about the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Jump down to verse 17 and go ahead. Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where would thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? All right, now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Passover, they are one and the same. They are two feasts together. On the 14th day of the first month was the Passover, and on the 15th day of, this, of that same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, so they get intertwined with each other. So he said that, where would thou that we, uh, on verse 17, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, where would thou that we prepare to eat the Passover? Now, flip over to John chapter 19 real quick. Because remember, Passover is on the first day, and the day right after that, is the holy convocation of the high Sabbath, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. St. John chapter 19 and verse 31. St. John chapter 19, verse 31. When you get there, go ahead. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that bodies should not be remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was in high day, uh -huh. besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. All right, so we know that Jesus died on the Passover. He is the Passover lamb. Now, they had to hurry up and make sure he was dead because a dead body, according to the law, cannot be, um, had to be buried before sundown. And we knew the next day was a high Sabbath. But what next day was that? The Feast of Unleavened Bread. And this is what people try to use to justify Good Friday. Because it said the next day was a high Sabbath. Because everybody know that Friday, then the Saturday is a high Sabbath. The next day is a high Sabbath. Or the next day is a Sabbath. But this particular one was the high Sabbath because Jesus died on the Passover, which is the 14th day of that month. And then the next day is the 15th day of that month, which is the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is the high Sabbath or the annual Sabbath. So we know Jesus kept all these things and then they talked about these things. Let's see if Paul kept this day. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Now this is after Jesus' death. And this is the Apostle Paul. Let's see, did he even keep the Feast of Unleavened, unleavened Bread? Acts chapter 20 and verse 1, when you get there, go ahead. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them, and departed forth to go into Macedonia. Uh -huh. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. All right, so now reading as we see how Paul is traveling all around these um, nations, preaching unto the Jews and the Gentiles, traveling everywhere. First, he uh, went into Macedonia, then he went into Greece, and we also see that he's going to other places like Asia and then Troas. But jump down to verse 6 and see what he did there. Go ahead. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread. So he stayed in Philippi and celebrated what? The, the days, days of, of unleavened, unleavened bread. bread. So he kept these days. Why? Because the law said to. And he knew they're still good because they all point to something. So he sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and then what? And came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. So after the days of unleavened bread, then he finished his traveling, went to other people to preach and things like that. But what does this day signify? The Lord is not going to have you put all leaven out your house and then not tell you what all these things mean. Flip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And what, because all the Lord's days, holy days, mean something. It's not some ritual that he has you to keep you busy. They all stand for something. Like the Passover. We celebrate the Passover because that's celebrating God's grace as Jesus passed over. So as we come under the blood of Jesus, all our sins are passed over. 
just like that angel of death passed over all those who were already on the blood. But now what the Feast of Unleavened Bread do? The Feast of Unleavened Bread is saying that we're putting all the leaven out of our house or saying that we're getting all the sin away from us. First Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 6, when you get there, Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. When you get there, go ahead. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Now it says your glory is not good. Know you not a little leaven leaven the whole lump. All you need is a little leaven. All you need is a, a, a little leaven and some dough to make it rise. So a little sin can mess you up. Go ahead. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even as Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So it said, purge you out the old leaven or get away to all the old sin out your mind, out the, all your old way of thinking out your mind, that you may be a new love even as you are unleavened. Or you are walking in newness of life because all that wickedness is out your mind. That's what the leaven represented. That's why after the Passover, you're saying, I'm not going to do them things anymore. So all the leaven is gone away. Um, verse 8. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So that's what this day is all about, worshiping God in sincerity and truth. And we're going to emphasize in truth. Flip over to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15, we're going to read verses 8 and 9. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8 and 9. The reason why we celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread is because we're letting God know that we're putting away all the false worship. Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 and 9. When you get there, go ahead. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Uh -huh. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Now, this is what Jesus said. In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Meaning, doctrines that God did not esteem holy. God did not tell you it was holy. If God didn't tell you it was holy, then it's a doctrine and a commandment of man. Plain and simple. Prime example. The feast day that's around now that... We're supposed to get the Passover, but the world is keeping a different day. It's called Easter. Now we're going to show you this doctrine commanding a man from the last two million years history book by Reader's Digest. We're going to read about the history of Easter on page 217 for under the article Pagan Rites Absorbed. Go ahead and read that paragraph right there, brother. Actually, it's 216, page 216. Okay. Pagan Rites Absorbed. By a stroke of tactical genius, the church... While intolerant of pagan beliefs was able to harness the powerful emotions generated by pagan worship. Mm -hmm. Often, churches were cited where temples had stood before, and many heathen festivals were added to the Christian calendar. Now, this is what Jesus is talking about. They worshiped me at the doctrine, commandments, and men. Many heathen uh, festivals were added to the Christian calendar. Not by God, but by man. Go ahead. Easter, for instance. And that's the one that's right around the Passover and Feast of Unleavened Bread. Go ahead. A time of sacrifice and rebirth in the Christian year takes its name from the Norse goddess Erstarte. And that's what Easter came for. They barely changed the name. A Norse goddess Erstarte. Go ahead. In whose honor rites were held every spring. Uh -huh. She in turn was simply a northern version of the Phoenician Earth Mother Erstarte, goddess of fertility, uh -huh. which the egg is a symbol of birth. And cakes were, which were eaten to mark the festivals of Astarte and Eostre were the direct ancestors of our hot cross burns. Burns. So this is where the Easter egg came from. It came from the worshiping of the goddess of fertility, Astarte eggs. But you try to incorporate that with Christ. That's what man has done. But the Feast of Unleavened Bread, you're telling Christ, I'm not doing that no more. I'm getting all that old leaven out of my house. I'm giving all that false worship out of my house. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read one verse in that verse 8. Because too many pagan rituals were added to the Christian calendar by the what church? Not the church of the Holy Bible, but by the Roman Catholic Church. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 8. We're going to wrap it up with that. We're going to read that verse one more time. Go ahead. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And that's what the feast of unleavened bread is about, doing away with all that false worship and worship according to what's written in God's holy Bible. This is the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.